Diablo 4 Season 5 is called The Season of the Infernal Hordes, and Blizzard meant that literally. The new game mode is insanely overtuned for basically everything. It gives the most XP in the game, the mode provides the easiest way to get master working materials, legendaries that you need, including one guaranteed greater affix item, which yes, was bugged, but has been since hotfixed. It can provide stygian stones at higher levels, herbs, abyssal scrolls, sigil dust, gem fragments, enchanting and tempering materials, and tons and tons of gold. Now I'm gonna show you how it works and the best way to maximize your time. To enter the Infernal Horde, you need to do the seasonal quest line if you have not done so already. Doing these will reward you with one of the Infernal Horde compass which you need to enter. You can also craft these at the Occultist just like you would a Nightmare Dungeon. Once you click on the Infernal Horde sigil, press M and click on the red icon on the map just like you would a Nightmare Dungeon. So the new mode is simple. Basically, you stand in a room, kill waves and waves of monsters as fast as you can, pick between three options in between each round, and once you kill the boss encounter at the end, you Scrooge McDuck your rewards. Try tiers 1 through 3 pre-level 100, but once you reach endgame, start with 4 and work your way up as you acquire new pieces and master working materials to upgrade that gear. The gameplay that you're seeing here is my non-uber-unique Lightning Spear Sorcerer taking out a tier 7. The rewards get really juicy at this tier. Here are some tips to make the most of your Infernal Horde run. The choices you make in between each round are very important, but very simple. You're going to want to look for anything that says Hellborn, and I'll explain why. There seems to be a hidden mechanic at play. Whatever you pick in the early rounds, the game will try to hand you more of the same type of choice. I don't think this has been confirmed, but several content creators have mentioned that they've noticed this as well. There's definitely still some RNG at play here, but this hidden mechanic is awesome unless you pick the wrong option, which I'll cover in a second. The reason why you want to look for Hellborn is because they spawn like crazy, they chase you, and they have some really cool supporting power-ups that help in the later waves, essentially making them the best way to farm ether. The other one to look out for is normal monster damage plus 25%, killing them spawns ether events 50% faster. The choices to avoid would be soul spires, hellfire rains on you, ether lord spawning, and the infernal demon, which is just a souped up butcher. The main reason why you want to avoid all of these is because if you choose anything other than hellborn as something to spawn, it essentially dilutes the pool of available things to spawn during the waves, and we want Hellborn to spawn more than anything. Plus, the Aether Lords can be a real son of a bitch and slow down your run, thus slowing down your gains. Now, you will be faced with poor options from time to time where you're forced to take something that doesn't have to do with Hellborn. That's just the way that it goes. Just try to avoid anything that indicates a spawn, if at all possible. It's not the end of the world if you have to. As far as other tips, always try to keep moving and move towards the circles that appear on your mini-map and just blast everything as fast and as hard as you can. Hit it like you mean it! Now, for the boss, there are six total possibilities, but only three spawn at a time, giving a total of 20 different boss scenarios that you can face. For the most part, I just try to kill them all as fast as I can. If you happen to get the flame guy, he'll run from you but try to kill him first if you can. So that about wraps it up. Again, the Infernal Horde mode is where it's at this season. The only thing that you really need to look for outside of the Infernal Hordes would be materials to summon the bosses and nightmare dungeons to level your glyphs. Now, I do know that I have oversimplified this and there's a lot of nuances and different ways to approach this, but I wanted to give a no frills, easy way to follow for the average gamer. Now, if you like this style of video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe so you can get more.